about seven years old, my parents um, figured out that I was a little different. And the joke that my mom used to always say is that she thought that she and my father were great parents until they had me. And um, because my brother was so into following rules and he was just like an easy kid, I guess. And so um, several of the things I was diagnosed with were learning disabilities, specifically in reading, writing, and um, spelling and grammar and those sorts of things. And I was told a lot of things like, you're not gonna go to college, you might not ever get good grades, and um, I ended up excelling in all of those things. And the other experience, <laughs> the other experience I had, um, we talk a lot about respect your elders, and I believe in that. But one of the experiences I had as a little person was that I had a lot of adults um, talk down to me and be really disrespectful, basically, as a little person. And I remember fighting a lot with the adults in my life, especially the professionals. And I remember like bowing as a little person. I was like, I am never gonna be that adult. I am never going to treat youth with disrespect. I am never gonna be that person. And I'm gonna grow up one day, and I'm gonna work with children, and I am just gonna help save the world. You know, like that kind of projective thinking when you're a kid. And then I forgot entirely about it. And I grew up primarily being a writer and a poet and a storyteller. And when I got to college, um, the last thing I wanted was to be a therapist because both my parents were in the field and that was the last thing I wanted. I did not want to be anywhere near what they were doing. I wanted to be a writer and that was what my passion was. And I started taking some classes about um, disability and I found myself really identifying with those with invisible disabilities or differences. And then this flood of memories came back that I had kind of bottled up from my childhood, and I decided I'm gonna do both. And I definitely always feel like my um, passion has been writing first, and then um, my second passion is, um, I don't quite say therapy, but psychology or the study of humans. I think that would be a better way of putting it, the study of humans and society. So um, I am going to have a little clipboard near me. If you're interested in therapeutic writing, I'm working on programming right now and eventually going to create my own organization and start doing newsletters and stuff. So if you want to give me your information, I will keep you in the loop. So that being said, let's do some poetry. This poem is called Highway Rain. The desert looks almost out of place in the rain. It is not accustomed to touch. Twigs and bark bristle against the slow coup d'etat of clouds. Saguaros stand taller in challenge, gripping to baked dust. No one ever told you why. Rain is so special here. It wasn't until you saw the lightning rod place its finger again and again until you notice the smell, creosote, how all the plants rise up like a body rises into a back bend, or like your hair on the back of your neck when deja vu brushes you. It wasn't until you saw how humbly the desert drank, never asking the water if there was somebody else. It wasn't until you noticed the way the desert hummed, sometimes for days afterwards. It wasn't until you saw the steam rise up from rocks and stray bits of metal. It wasn't until you had to pull the car over because there was just nothing but rain. It wasn't until then, stopped halfway between Tucson and El Paso, that you knew, you knew, you could never leave the desert. You might move away for years, but you would always come back. Your devotion to water was only made sharper by experiencing it sparsely. You learn to ignore all of the wrong names, empty, dried out, lifeless, barren, and you replace them all with open. You learned from the desert, a place rumored to be lifeless, how to live, smiled when people didn't get it, didn't see the beauty in long stretches of sky and earth. Some people, they needed more green hills, but you, you needed more possibilities. You became a local when you understood that it wasn't the rarity of rain that made it so special. It was how frantically the sky and earth connected, weaving curtains of water and electric bolts between them as if sheer intensity could counteract the inconsistency. Rain 
in the desert is like a showdown, like rage turned to sex and then lovemaking, beautiful, terrifying.